Here we're asked to determine the work done by the gas on the piston shown in the figure as it expands quasi-statically from some initial volume to some final volume given that the piston area is 0.01 square meters so that's the cross-sectional area of this piston and the mass resting on the piston is also given as 100 kilograms so we're told to neglect the weight of the actual piston itself so the mass is, is pretty big compared to the, the piston mass. And we're also told to assume that atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascals absolute. So this is going to be PDV work. Uh, our system here is the gas, and it's going to be doing some work on the environment. Where that work is being done is, is right here on this piston. So to calculate uh, PDV work uh, done by the system, it's going to look like this. It's the integral of PDV as we go some, from some initial volume to some final volume. The initial volume, I'll just write down here, we're given is 0 0.02 cubic meters. The final volume is also given as 0 0.04 cubic meters. The next thing that we need to figure out is what the pressure is. Now in this case, the pressure is going to be a constant. And it's going to be due to the fact that we have this mass pushing down on the piston. So there's this force being exerted by the mass acting downward. Right? It's just the, the weight of the mass. And that's going to be distributed over the cross-sectional area of the piston. So I'll just call it A sub P here. So we have that effective pressure. Right, The pressure would be like the force divided by the area. So there's some effective pressure acting downward on the gas. So the gas is balancing and acting upward. The other part that we have to factor in is that there's atmospheric pressure as well. So there's some atmospheric pressure acting down on this piston phase two. So the, the pressure that the gas is pushing against, so remember the gas, there's some pressure here that's pushing against it to keep everything in equilibrium. So that pressure is going to be the atmospheric pressure plus the, the force caused by the mass. That's just the weight. So I'll just write it as mg divided by the cross-sectional area of the piston, which is AP. And here, we're told that atmospheric pressure is 101 times 10 to the third pascals, it's an absolute pressure. The mass is 100 kilograms, that's given. Gravity, of course, is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the cross-sectional area of the piston is also given uh, as 0 0.01 square meters. So we can go ahead and plug in the values. By the way, if you plug in for the pressure, to, to calculate what the pressure is, that should come out to be 1.99 times 10 to the fifth pascals. And note that that pressure is a constant in this problem, that you know the, the weight of the mass doesn't change, the cross-sectional area doesn't change, atmospheric pressure doesn't change. So this pressure P right here is a constant. So that means we can just pull it outside the integral. If the pressure varied with the volume, then we'd have to leave it inside the integral and figure out how the pressure varies with volume to do that integration. But since it's constant, we can pull it outside. And so the integral becomes very easy to evaluate. It just looks like this. So we can go ahead and plug in our values for the pressure that we just calculated in the initial and final volumes. And when all is said and done, if you plug in the numbers, you'll get that the work is 3.9 kilojoules. Okay, One little item, just to keep in mind, you have to be a little careful of it, is just, just watch your units when you calculate everything out. I, I skipped over that step just for the sake of time, but when you plug in here, just be a little careful of the units. For example, um, you know, if, if, you, if you express the pressure in terms of kilopascals instead of pascals here uh, times the uh, cubic meters here, you'll end up with kilojoules. Or, you know, here I just use pascals here, and then I converted it to kilojoules. You, you just have to be a little careful of units so that you write this in the proper set of units. So, uh, you know, 3.9 kilojoules as opposed to 3.9 joules, for example. So just, just be a little careful of units. Uh, a good way to be careful with that is if you actually put in either an intermediate step, which I didn't do here, but if you put in the intermediate step, it'd look like this. So I'm just writing out 
the intermediate step like that and then you would just you could actually work out the numerical values sorry I'm not gonna write I don't know what the well, I guess I do know the numerical value let me write that out if you worked it out the numerical value would look something like that and then a Pascal is just a Newton per meter squared so then this would be Newton over meter squared times meter cubed that is going to be a Newton meter and a Newton meter is a joule and then you could write this as 3.9 kilojoules. So this would be perhaps a better way to do it uh, if time wasn't an issue. Just work out the units just to make sure you don't make a silly mistake with, your, uh, with converting units. Okay, we'll end the example there.